to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in home 49th Street at the bench. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, we got more art critiques for you, and today, we're looking at Masha's little straight letter he gave to us. If you're interested in critique, all you gotta do is use the hashtag ABCrit over on Instagram in order to submit your piece. We accept all art forms. Today's video is sponsored by Alita Art Supplies. Alita Art Supplies, of course, being the company that sells amazing quality sketchbooks that work phenomenally with markers. I got their link in the description down below, as well as the link to Masha's Instagram. So if you enjoy his work, be sure to go and check it out. As always, in the comments down below, let me know what you think Mosh could work on, and let me know what you think he did well. Now let's hop right into the critique, shall we? This right here is what we did in the last critique video, and here's Mosh's work. Right upon looking at this, there's a couple of things that stand out to me. So let's start off with the very first thing on the M being these lines over here. When you overlap lines like these on a letter like M, it becomes very reminiscent of a throw-up style. Now the difference between a straight letter and a throw-up is a throw-up gets rid of negative space as much as possible. That's the whole functionality of a throw-up. Throw-ups were made to be done quick and easy, and as a result, you don't want to sit there drawing every single counter, closed counter, open counter, and every single hard edge. So this right here is something you'll see much more of in an M throw-up. Now I'm not saying this M looks like a throw-up because it doesn't look anything like a throw-up at all whatsoever, but what it does do is it lessens the amount of structure you could have potentially have had. With just one simple change, you can immediately see the difference between this leg and this leg now. And when I turn the layers on and off, once again, you can see the difference in the amount of structure. That's what we're focused on. We're focusing on how much structure that letter has. Because when we take a look at the rest of the letters in the name, each one of them has a lot more structure than the M does. And it's because they don't suffer from the same problem of having an overlapping line such as that. The only other time you see that is in the H, and we'll get to that later in the video. Next up, I'm going to touch on this very lightly. This is a much deeper topic, but I do want to just kind of nick it a little bit. And that is proportionate details. You've began your M with a very bold, thick width, as you can see indicated by the horizontal lines, and the long, straight, arcing vertical line. Your letters are large, they're fat, they're big letters, they're heavy letters, or at least on the left side of the name. And then you have this tiny, tiny, small detail. Well, that detail isn't proportionate to the rest of the piece. And you see this in various places, because you have it over here as well, over here, as well as over here, and over here. It's details like this that are more proportionate, details like that, and like this and like this that are much more proportionate for the actual letters. Let's move on from the M and hop over to the O. You have this detail right here on the O, which is essentially a compressed extension, which we talked about in our last graffiti critique, right here, and then you have a wick off the top of it. Now that wick indicates and suggests that your O is supposed to be a bomb. Now bombs typically don't have a massive hole in the middle of them that indicates negative space. Not only that, but bombs are spherical objects. They are not cylindrical objects, or at least not the bomb that you're trying to draw. What you're drawing here is a cylinder, and on that cylinder, you have the top of a bomb. If you were to have a wick inside the top of that bomb part that I drew right there, it would go in the center and come out, meaning that your form would be off because the wick would not be coming out the edge of that cylinder. So, in a nutshell, what I'm saying is, if this is an in fact supposed to be a bomb, then you would not have 3D on it because the bomb would not be cylindrical. The bomb would be spherical and as a result would go behind the S like so and change the rest of the name after it being the S and the H. Now if you would like this to be the letter O then yes you would not only keep this but you can also keep the 3D but you would have to get rid of that because it does not make sense. Now lastly we have an important part of the O and that is this thin area here. Typically when you're doing a basic straight letter and you're also still learning the basics the first letter of your name sets all of the standards for the rest of the name. What that means is is your M is super thick all the way around. It doesn't really have a thin part about it, meaning all of your other letters would reflect that. Your O then introduces a different element showing it has a super thin area. Well, now the M and the O don't really flow together because the M doesn't have a thin area. You could have easily have achieved this with having a thin part right there coming over for the structure and then, you know, so on and so forth. But in this instance, that didn't happen. So your O is the first to have that. And then you carry this out to the S, you carry it out to the H. Now the M contains a ton more more weight than the rest of your other letters. Not to mention, a single structure of the O completely outwits any single structure elsewhere on the piece. So what happens because of this? Typically in graffiti, when you're talking about letter and name weight, you end up splitting your name in half. In this instance, it would be M-O versus S-H. The M-O, because of the letter width of the M, not having any thin areas in the M, as well as the O being, in some cases, two to three times on a single structure, long 
stronger than any other single structure, your MO then get a massive amount of weight. Your SH not only having a variety of width throughout its structure, and your H also having a variety of width throughout its structure, your SH are a ton lighter. This ends up weighing down your left side and raising up your right side, and you don't want that. Think of your name like a scale. Once again, this scale goes down the middle of your name. You want the entire name to be balanced. Obviously, once you get better, you can do whatever you want because you know the basics and you know how to break those rules, but you can't break the rules until you learn the rules. In this instance, what's happening is your MO are weighed down and your SH, because they weigh less, they would go higher on that scale. You want to balance out your name, and the way you would do that is easily, simply just adding the same width throughout all of your letters. You can have width variations like this. That's very, very common in graffiti. You did it beautifully on the S. Mind you, the, the S is, is, a, is a good S. Your S is amazing. S is by far the best letter in this piece. So you could have structure widths, but you need to be consistent throughout all of your letters. Your H needs to have structure widths as well, regardless of whether it gets, you know, say skinny to fatter on the bottom, or maybe it goes from fat to skinny, you know? Just mix it up. Mix it up consistently throughout the entire name, and you should be good as far as letter weight is concerned. Lastly, just for the sake of video length, I want to talk about doing this on your pieces. This is something you'll actually see me do quite a bit, and I'll demonstrate it on your M, where I'll go ahead, and you'll see this on my R's all the time, where I'll go ahead and I'll take part of the structure, I'll kick it out, and then I'll kick it back in like that. But you'll notice I'll never do that on both sides. You'll never see me do that on both sides. And this suggestion contextualizes one structure's relationship with another structure, that being this middle part with the leg. As we spoke about earlier, graffiti contains forms when you add 3D to it. Graffiti contains forms pretty much in general. And what you're doing by overlapping these four lines is you're saying that this right here is a cylindrical object or a rectangular object that lays on top of the things it overlaps, in this case being the legs of the H. And just to give you guys a visual representation, it would be like this tube being the horizontal part of his H and my arm being the leg of the H. That's what he's doing. If this tube over on this side right here then got sucked into my arm all of a sudden, but the bottom and the top did not, that would be his H. That would be exactly what is happening and that would be weird right that would look odd that's why you don't want to do that so what you rather could have done is you could have let's say done what I do on my R's you could have kicked this part down you don't even have to kick it down that kick down is something that I do you don't once again you don't have to do that you would not have then added this line because you need to show that this is the structure going downward that's what's happening this is going downward into the letter and then just for balance reasons I personally would have gotten rid of the top one you could have gotten rid of the bottom one if you wanted to but I would have gotten rid of one of the other ones regardless and there you go there's your overlap, it works out, and it looks much better. And like I said, you could have done this in any fashion. You could have gotten rid of the bottom one, you could have gotten rid of both of these, you know, you could have gotten rid of the top one and kept, say, just this one. It, it's all up to you at that point. But you just don't want two on the same side. Otherwise, you get that thing I was talking about. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is a good place in order to stop the critique. If you're interested in a critique, feel free to use the hashtag ABCrit over on Instagram. Who is texting me? And don't forget, in the comments down below, let's help Mosh get better. What do you think he can work on in order to improve? And what do you think he did well? Like I said before, I think his S is really good. I like his S. It's a dope, it's a dope S. Also, let me take a second to thank Lita Art Supplies for sponsoring this video. They make phenomenal sketchbooks. I got a link to both Lita as well as Mosh in the description down below. Lastly, if you guys enjoyed this video, go crazy on that like button. Let me know that you enjoy the content. It helps me out a bunch. And for those of you guys who are new here, we come out with weekly art videos. Feel free to subscribe for more. Anyway, I'll catch you guys next time. But until then, peace. Welcome to the end card, ladies and gentlemen, you guys know how this do by now. If you missed some of these critique videos, click this top playlist, and on the bottom you got somebody else here on YouTube whose content I enjoy. I think they're pretty dope. Anyway, I'll catch you guys next time.